What's up guys, it's Weaviver, welcome back to my channel. In my previous VR benchmark video, I showed you more than 20 Steam VR games and the performance running them in native 4K resolution on the Pimax 8KX. Many of you have since then asked me about Oculus Home games or the Oculus exclusive games. So that's why this time I'm about to show you a couple of the best Oculus exclusive VR games in native 4K resolution and what performance we can get from these games with an RTX 2080 Ti. Now, I know many of you are saying, well, you work for Pimax, Martin, and yes, I do, I have to admit that, right? And I've done so many times in the past. But let me tell you that in my videos, I'm giving you facts, I'm giving you numbers, and you can do whatever you want with them, and I won't give you any of my opinions, and I don't expect you to believe me. Anyway, guys, before we begin, Please subscribe to my channel if you still trust and enjoy my videos. And thanks to all my Patreon supporters and my official sponsors on Patreon, Commander Darklight, Art Armin and VR Ambassador. And by the way, cheers Armin. Guys, let me start off by talking a little bit about the benchmarks itself. There are a couple of things I need to talk about before we jump into the games. Oculus Home games can be run or started in two different ways on a Pimax headset, including the 8KX. You can use the application Revive, just like HTC Vive and other VR headset user does, or you can use the Pytool Game Launcher, where all your Oculus games are automatically imported. Game Launcher runs the games natively without Steam VR running or taking up any VR or GPU resources. Most of the time you get a better performance by running the games natively in the Pytool Game Launcher because Revive is just a hack and it is not optimal, especially in those very GPU demanding games. So all of the tests here have been made using the Game Launcher and Afterburner is used for the FPS or frame rate counter and GPU and CPU utilization. But I will also show you a couple of comparisons using the Revive in a couple of these games. Furthermore, all of these games has been tested with default Pytool settings, which means render quality at 1.0, normal field of view of 150 degrees horizontally, no smart smoothing or fixed foveated rendering is used in any of these tests, and the render resolution is native 4K per eye, roughly 3800 pixels horizontally. My PC is powered with an overclocked RTX 2080 Ti, which is boosting at 2060 MHz at most. The CPU is an Intel i9-9900K processor, overclocked to 5 GHz per core, and the RAM memory is 32 GB. I have modified some of the games in the in-game settings to get some better performance of course and I will show you that for each game now presented. So let's start off with Robo Recall. Although being quite an old game, it's still one of the most popular ones for Oculus and many of you has requested this game specifically. The game looks stunning in native 4K resolution and I think it's one of these games you just have to try once you get your 8KX. For this test I maxed out the in-game settings such as anti-aliasing and effects but I left the super sampling at 1.0 in-game as I think it can't get much sharper than this anyway. Running Robo Recall with Pytool Game Launcher without SteamVR, my RTX 2080 Ti have no problems maintaining a stable 75 frames per second frame rate, or more or less at least. There are a few occasions in intense action where the frame rate could drop a few frames, especially in slow motion moments with a lot of effects, but have in mind I'm also recording this at the same time with OBS Studio. I would say anti-aliasing is still needed here, even on 4K native resolution, there is some jagged edges or aliasing without anti-aliasing on, so if you are picky, leave the anti-aliasing at maximum in Robo Recall for the best experience. I know there might be some other more GPU demanding maps in Robo Recall, but looking at the GPU utilization, I think we can easily see that there is a lot of GPU headroom for higher settings here. Maybe you could try to increase the super sampling in game, although it's really not needed as the game is super sharp on 1.0. All in all, Robo Recall is a very smooth experience I must say, maybe a bit surprising even, and I expect you could get Robo Recall running smooth with a Pimax 8KX even on a GDX 1080 Ti or lower if you tweak down some settings. 
I must add though that you could run Robo Recall on Pimax 8KX with Revive. Even if the frame rate is high using the same settings in game, the GPU utilization is way higher here, and in intense action, you will see a lot of frame drops running with SteamVR as the renderer. For the maximum performance and more GPU overhead, I highly recommend you to use the native mode with the PyTool Game Launcher instead. Next up, Lone Echo. Yes, it's an old Oculus exclusive title, but still one of the best and most popular ones available. Currently, we are waiting for the sequel, which will be using the same game engine as far as I know, so I assume that the performance you see here will be the same in Lone Echo 2. As mentioned before, the test is made by running Lone Echo through the PyTool game launcher, not only because after the recent update, the game does not start using Revive with Pimax headsets at all. When doing this test, I'm basically maxing out the in-game graphical settings, although you can see I have disabled anti-aliasing altogether. It's for one reason, it's definitely not needed here when running this game on a Pimax 8KX in native 4K resolution. There are no jagged edges at all anywhere, and the game has never looked so sharp, crisp and beautiful as now. To be honest, it's quite funny that Oculus exclusives look so much better here now compared to an Oculus Rift or Oculus Rift S. Actually, I think adding anti-aliasing made the game just look less sharp and detailed on distance. The frame rate is mostly maxed out and feels smooth, running in 75 frames per second. In few occasions though, I saw a few frame drops, but I never saw them when running this game on the 8KX without recording this gameplay. Now, this is just the beginning of the game, but I think the locations tested here are some of the most GPU demanding ones throughout the entire game, so I assume this test should give you a good idea of what you expect if you plan to play Lone Echo or the upcoming Lone Echo 2 on your Pimax 8KX. Now Asgard's Wrath. Maybe the most popular Oculus Home exclusive title right now and many of you have been wondering about the performance running it on the Pimax 8KX in native 4K resolution. In this test I've been using following in-game settings. Basically everything is on high except for post-processing which has turned down to low. It actually helps to keep the frame rate most stable in some of the scenes and for some reason decreasing the post-processing also makes the game more sharp and better looking. Well at least if you ask me. I'm actually a bit surprised about the performance running Oscar Rat in native 4K resolution, most of the time the frame rate is maxed out and when some occasional frame drops occur, you will probably not even notice that. Even in the bigger outdoor scenes and during fighting, the frame rate is quite stable and the whole experience feels very smooth and super sharp. As I said, you might see some frame drops down to 70 or so, and in some occasional scenes, such as the ocean fight right in the beginning of the game, the frame rate can jump even down to 60 frames per second for some reason. I never noticed that while playing, but if you are sensitive to frame drops, you could prevent that from happening by just lowering some of the in-game settings, especially the in-game resolution. Decreasing it to 90% or even 80% makes almost no difference in image quality on the 8KX as the game is so super sharp anyway and this will for sure help in maintaining a frame rate in most intensive scenes of the game. As you can see I'm running Asgard's Rat through PyTool Game Launcher without SteamVR. I must add though you can run this game through Revive and SteamVR as well. The problem though is once again performance. The frame rate is way more unstable this way and you can see way higher GPU utilization and much more frame drops using Revive. So if you want to enjoy a way more smooth experience in Asgard's Rat on the Pimax 8KX, simply use the Game Launcher instead. Lastly, Stormland. Now, this is probably the most beautiful Oculus Home exclusive title. Unfortunately, it's also the most GPU demanding Oculus game I've ever seen and getting a stable frame rate is quite impossible. At least if you run it in a high resolution such as 4K on the Pimax 8KX. In this test, I ran the game through PyTool Game Launcher of course and the in-game settings are as follows. The anti-aliasing is not really needed running this game in native 4K resolution, although I could see some slight jagged edges. With anti-aliasing enabled, especially temporal anti-aliasing, the frame rate is just not acceptable, so that's why I left it off. 
And here's the thing, this game also needs parallel projection enabled, otherwise you will get some graphical glitches. And therefore the resolution is even higher than 4K native here when running it with the game launcher. Now in some scenes the game runs quite okay and almost at full frame rate actually, which feels smooth enough. But once you enter the bigger maps with crazy amount of details and objects, the frame rate starts to suffer big time. The frame rate jumps between 50 and 60 frames per second and sometimes even a few frames below 50. Sure, it's still kind of playable and if you enable smart smoothing, I'm sure you will get a nice and stable experience in Stormland. Your head movements are fully smooth thanks to reprojection of course, with or without smart smoothing and I have no doubts that many of you can play the entire game like this. But for me, the performance is just not acceptable and I think a lot of this is to blame on the parallel projection requirement. You can probably decrease more of the settings and maybe lower the resolution, but doing so you will also get more jagged edges and that requires anti-aliasing, which is very GPU heavy itself. Now I know this game is not really smooth on the Valve Index either, unless you use smart smoothing of course, but a native 4K resolution on the Pimax 8KX is simply too much for the RTX 2080 Ti to handle in this game. Maybe we will see some game optimizations coming soon and I really hope so because until then I think I'll just wait with playing this game. Stormland really looks stunning in the native 4K resolution, no screen door effect and wide field of view, but to be fully enjoyable you need a stable frame rate. And I have my doubts it's actually possible at this point and I think it's quite a shame. Well I know what you're thinking now, there are more Oculus titles, yes there are many of them, but many of them are also available on Steam VR already, so why even use Oculus if you have a Pimax? And for those games who are available which I didn't cover here, I wonder how many of them are you still playing yet today? I actually tried Vader Immortal Episode 1 which runs smooth enough to be fully enjoyable and yeah it looks awesome in 4K native resolution. I also tried From Other Sons which also runs most of the time in 75 frames per second with occasional frame drops using maximum in-game details. Either way, I think those four titles should give you an idea of what you can expect in terms of Oculus exclusive games performance on a Pimax 8KX once it arrives at your door. And guys, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments down here below. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Cheers!